Today we're going to talk about this really interesting integral from the 2005 Putnam. And the reason I'm going to talk about this is because this is one of these integrals that actually rewards you for every observation that you make that feels partially intuitive, even though you don't know where those intuitive ideas are going to lead to. So we're going to take marginal steps along the way to figure out how to compute the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of x plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 dx. The key is going to be using a combination of trigonometric substitution and a symmetry argument. So let's go ahead and take a look. So when looking at this integral, you might notice the possibility of a trig substitution by looking at the denominator. You notice that the denominator is a 1 plus x squared. And if you're integrating something like 1 over 1 plus x squared, you might do a substitution where you substitute x for tan u and then use a trigonometric identity. So we'll go ahead and actually do that. We'll let x be tan t instead of u. And then x squared plus 1 is going to be tan squared plus 1. But first, we need to compute the dx in terms of dt. And since x is tan t, the derivative of tan is secant squared, so dx is secant squared t dt. And then also, x squared plus 1, the denominator, is tan squared of t plus 1, which is secant squared of t. And so our integral gets simplified to the following, making sure we keep track of where our bounds go first. So when x is 0, t is 0 tan 0 is 0. And when x is 1, t will be pi over 4 because we'll be figuring out the value of t for which tan t is 1, and that's pi over 4. Okay, so putting this all together then, we get that the integral that we're interested in is in fact the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of ln of 1 plus tan t divided by secant squared t times secant squared t dt. Now, you might think, well, this kind of complicated the integral a little bit, because what you're left with when you do the division is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the natural logarithm of 1 plus tan t dt. But one of the things that I mentioned at the beginning of this entire process is every time you see something that might be intuitive to do, it's a good idea to go ahead and try to actually do it. This integral is one of these integrals that rewards you for making observations about integrals. And one of the things you might notice in this particular integral is that 0 and pi over 4 are special values with respect to tan. So now we're going to introduce this integral j, which actually takes the symmetry into account. So instead of integrating from 0 to pi over 4 of natural log of 1 plus tan t dt, we're going to do tan of pi over 4 minus t. So we'll let u be pi over 4 minus t to see what this symmetrized version of the original integral will actually turn out to be. Okay, so t goes from 0 to pi over 4, so u is going to go from pi over 4 down to u, but then we have a negative dt for du, and so our integral becomes the integral from pi over 4 to 0 of ln of 1 plus tan u times negative du. Taking out the negative sign changes the order of integration, and then we notice by employing this symmetry that the integral that we're considering here, this integral j, actually turns out to be the same as our original integral. It's the same integral that we had, that we called i. All right, so our goal then is to maybe use j to be able to actually get some type of expression that with the symmetry will allow us to compute what i is in the first place. And what we'll do is take a look at this expression we've inserted in and use a sum of angles or difference of angles formula for tan to simplify it and see what we get. Okay, so inside the integral j, we have this particular quantity here, and we can simplify this as follows using that formula we talked about. This is tan pi over 4 minus tan t, all divided by 1 plus tan pi over 4 times tan t. Now we know what tan of pi over 4 is, it's 1, so this becomes 1 minus tan t divided by 1 plus tan t. 
Okay, so if you go back to the expression we had for the integral for j, we get the ln of 1 plus tan of this quantity, which now becomes ln of 1 plus 1 minus tan t over 1 plus tan t. Let's try to simplify this if possible. So the first thing we can notice is we can write this as one fraction. We'll get ln of 1 plus tan t plus 1 minus tan t all over 1 plus tan t. And then the tan t and the minus tan t in the numerators cancel to give us ln of 2 all over 1 plus tan t. Now, this is actually really great because we can break up the natural logarithm. It's a natural logarithm of a quotient. That's the difference of the natural logarithm of the numerator and the denominator. So we get ln of 2 minus ln of 1 plus tan t. So, in other words, we can rewrite j, which was this integral right over here, using this entire set of expressions by substituting in this right-hand side for the left-hand side. And so if we do that, we end up with j being the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of ln of 2 minus ln of 1 plus tan t, all taken dt. Now this is fantastic. Because if we break this integral up, we get the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of ln of 2, which is a constant, dt. And then we're left with this integral right over here, but that is actually our original transformation of the integral i that we started with. Right, so this integral here evaluates to this constant that we're integrating times the length of the interval we're integrating against which is ln of 2 times pi over 4, and then minus this integral, which was our transformed version of the original integral i. But by our symmetry argument, we talked about the fact that j and i, these two integrals, are actually exactly the same thing. So we can write that i is ln of 2 times pi over 4 minus i. And so we move the i to the other side, divide by 2, to get that i is pi over 8 times the natural logarithm of 2. So kind of a fascinating process, and I think the big things to learn about this particular integral and its result is that the first thing we noticed is that substituting tan t was a good idea because we had the 1 plus x squared in the denominator, that shouted to us a possibility of a trigonometric substitution. And then because we're left with this integral right over here, and the fact that tan t has this nice symmetry of when we switch pi over 4 and 0, doing that allowed us to get a simple equation for the original integral i that allowed us to solve and get the final result of pi over 8 times ln of 2.